A mystical being me name is Mitri and I want to share a mystical story that happened to me and my friend Olek when we were still children. We lived in the village and as is usually the case, we spent most of our time on the street. There was an abandoned manor house opposite my house. For what reasons it was abandoned, I do not know exactly, but the place, frankly, was not a pleasant one. The old house, built of logs, always swayed and creaked with piercing sounds in the wind, especially at night. But the house is not the only place that attracted our attention. On the territory of the estate, there was either a barn or a summer kitchen. According to my grandmother, a man named Parfir lived in this house, and no one else knew anything about this place. And then one day, playing with Oleg, I suggested go into the barn I'll call this building that. The front door was boarded up, but we got in through someone cut a hole in one of the walls. The shed was full of old junk wooden boxes, barrels, buckets, bottles, pieces of briquette, boards, decks, etc. This was not our first visit here, so I knew what was inside the barn and how. During the conversation, we did not even immediately pay attention. Something was wrong in the barn, and when they raised their eyes and looked at one of the walls, they were numb with horror. The boxes that had been scattered around the perimeter were now neatly stacked one on top of the other and towered almost to the roof. Next to this pillar was an incomprehensible creature that I had never met before. About one meter high, the gray-brown coat is clearly visible. The legs or paws are bent backwards with the knees, like a horse or a grasshopper, and the forelimbs are short. The head is something similar to a rabbit's. The face is flat. The ears are just like a rabbit's, large and raised up. And this beast was standing on its hind legs and holding one of the boxes in its front paws, trying to put it on top of the column. Neither Oleg nor I could speak out of surprise, but this mystical creature, apparently sensing us, turned its head, and I saw its red eyes. I still remembered this look after 20 years. A few seconds of stupor. Then, dropping the box, the beast jumped up and began to climb up the column without making a sound. Soon he slipped out through a crack in the roof, and Oleg and I, shouting loudly, rushed as fast as we could to my house. Continuing to scream, we ran into my grandmother's room and, stuttering, swallowing words, told about what had happened. Naturally, she didn't believe it, but went to the barn to look. We followed. Curiosity got the better of fear. Inside the shed, the boxes were also stacked in a column against one of the walls. As we got closer, we saw claw marks on them, but there was no other evidence of the presence of that creature. A little later we told this story to our parents and other relatives. No one took it seriously. Everyone just smiled, teasing that the Chupacabra himself appeared to us. But I clearly saw this creature, which, as it seemed to me, had intelligence. One can only guess how it ended up in this barn and what kind of animal it was in general. Ziazia. Maybe there are brownies. I have a friend Irina, a clever beauty, with a steely character and eternal bad luck in her personal life. But for the last six months, after Irina divorced her husband and moved out to her old apartment, bad luck somehow became overwhelming. Then the apartment of the neighbors from below will flood. Then she will have a wallet with all the credit cards in the washing machine. Then her five-year-old daughter will draw all the working documents with a marker or cut. A new dress with scissors. Small Leska, however, denied her participation in sabotage. All these nasty things, according to Leska, were done by Ziazia. Ziazia beat mugs plucked flowers on the window and tore the wallpaper no worse than a cat. This is some kind of horror. Irina complained to me, sitting in the dark kitchen. She painted the whole sink with toothpaste. Yes, 
She also got into the habit of sitting on the windowsill at night, under the open window. In the month of December, woke up yesterday, sitting, shouted. So she climbed into my bed, giggling. I see hands and feet, to a warm stomach. I'm yelling, of course, and anyway, who did it? Ziazia. Maybe I left my husband for nothing. That's what she's carrying. I sympathized, groaned, sigh, but could not advise anything useful, except to take Leska to a child psychologist. At this time, a crash was heard in the hallway. I looked at the clock, one o'clock in the morning, and Irina defiantly rolled her eyes. Leska, what are you doing again? Silence. We jumped out into the hallway. It was empty. Only it was clear that quite recently someone was messing around. And, it seems, even jumped in a large box with seedlings, which Irina carefully kept in order to use in the summer at the dacha in some of her planting work. From the box to Irina's room there was a chain of small dirty footprints. Irina turned on the light and froze. The room was also empty. The window was wide open and the tracks ended on the windowsill. Leska, a friend shouted in a voice not her own, and rushed into the hallway to get dressed. I also felt unwell. After all, the third floor, and I frantically tried to figure out where to call, an ambulance or the police. Ma am. Leska's voice was heard, and she looked out, disheveled and sleepy from her bedroom. Irina dropped her coat and rushed to her daughter to feel and kiss. I waved my hand and took a broom to clean up the mess, and she was wary. Something was wrong, not at all. The wet and dirty tracks were at first small, very small, as if someone no bigger than a cat was running there, and only then turned into a semblance of human, only some crooked splayed and with long fingers, or maybe even with claws, Irina, I called. And now the two of us were staring at the footprints. What is it? Irina asked and pressed Leska closer to her. Behind us, we heard some kind of vile and malicious laughter and immediately, the pattering of feet. I turned around and managed to notice something small in the dark corridor. Leska's height and see yellow glowing eyes. But that was enough. Leska was crying. Irina drank Valerian. I was sitting in the hallway with Irina's coat in my arms and was afraid to go home. I'll think about it, said Irina, finishing another glass of Valerian, that it was this that touched me with cold hands. She did not finish. That night Leska and Irina spent the night at my place, and the next one, too. And then Irina put the apartment up for sale and lived in a rented apartment for several months, you know. She confessed once, I only remembered later, when my parents and I lived here, in this very apartment, my sister, Tanya, she also talked about Zyazia, that she comes at night, sits on the windowsill, climbs into bed, and does not let her breathe. Tatiana, Irina's sister, died at the age of eight, as it was believed, from diphtheria. Irina bought the next apartment already in my house, only on the floor below. And, despite all the friendly feelings, I now think, maybe in vain, because no, no, yes, I will hear a nasty laugh, and the patter of small feet. A house with a hole, it was in one village, three girlfriends secretly from their parents began to smoke. They were very afraid that their parents would find out about it. One girl had a particularly angry dad. If he finds out, he will be whipped with a belt and heart. But they smoked anyway. They had their own secret place for this. A hole in the ground. There are trees around. No one ever goes there. But then they began to build a house on this place and the girls had to look for a new shelter. Here one says that her distant relative got infected with coronavirus two years ago, quickly aged and die, and now his house is empty. The door is closed, 
The windows are boarded up, but the girl knows a secret hole under the porch. That's how they got into this house. It was dark, empty and creepy. The girl spoke in whispers. It seemed to them that the house could hear them. From the slightest creak, the house seemed to come to life, and it became even scarier. Do you remember? There was a story about Uncle Grisha, who, they say, found a real black hole in the mine. He was arrested, ordered to give it back, but he did not give it back. I wonder where she is. Let's look for her. Suddenly we'll find it. The girls even forgot why they had sneaked into this house. They began to look for a hiding place in it. They searched for an hour, but found nothing. And then one girl came up with the idea to get her hand into the stove. She climbed in, fumbled for a long time and finally took out some kind of black box. All covered in soot. The box was made of iron. It was somehow opened, and they saw inside a black ball. This ball was completely black, blacker than black, and he was hanging right in the air inside the box. The girls stared at the black hole in fascination. Then they remembered why they had come here. At all. They took out cigarettes and lit up. The smoke began to be sucked into a black ball. After smoking, the girls continued to sit around and admire the black hole. Suddenly, smoke poured back out of it. There was a smell of tobacco. But the smoke was black and there was a lot of it. He got into the girls' mouths and noses. They sneezed and coughed, clutched their throats with their hands. They ran into another room, but the smoke caught up with them there, too. They wanted to open the windows, but they were boarded up. The girls already thought they were going to die soon. They began to call for help, but the smoke dissipated. What was that? One girl asked. It was tobacco smoke. Maybe this is all the smoke that we once smoked. And now the black hole is punishing us, said the second. And I heard, said the third, that time flows in the opposite direction in a black hole. We smoked. This smoke disappeared and then reappeared. The girls decided to check it out. They hit the black hole lightly with an ax and waited to see what would happen. At first there was nothing. A black ball hovered on the table above the box, and an axe lay on the table next to it. Suddenly, a hand popped out of the black hole and began slapping the table around, as if she was trying to find something. His hand groped for the axe, grabbed its handle. Something began to come out of the hole. It was something huge. The shapeless carcass turned into a man. The man was on all fours and occupied the whole room with himself. The girls ran off to another one. Yes, it's Uncle Grisha. One recognized him, only young and huge. Who's here? The giant asked menacingly. Who is in my house? And why does it smell like smoking here? Don't be afraid. The girl relative whispered to her friends. He won't find us. He always had poor eyesight. But the giant began to feel the whole house with his giant hand. He caught one girl, brought her to his eyes. Oh, chicken, that's what I need. I'm hungry as an animal. He cut off the head of the chicken with one blow of the axe and began to stuff the lifeless body into a large 20 liter pot. It's a small saucepan, he grumbled. Then he needed firewood. There was no firewood. He began to climb everywhere with his hand again and found the second girl. Oh, a lock. That's what I need. He cut the girl into several pieces and put her in the oven. The third girl was already going crazy with fear. Somehow she found the strength to escape from this terrible house so as not to fall into the hands of the giant and not to see him cooking his terrible soup. She ran to her home and no one recognizes her. After all, she had aged and began to look like a decrepit old woman. Inside the black hole, time flows backwards, and outside, next to it, time flows very fast. So the girl has grown old. She now lives in a nursing home, where everyone thinks she's crazy.